Peter Bates, Michelle Marie Delaney. It's the 13th of July. Today, we're going to talk about something that NASA has said and I have said to you. In fact, we both said the same thing. So listen up. NASA and a group of other scientists have pointed out that our sun, that is the most important energy source in the sky, is operating or will be operating at a cooler temperature setting um, on the Earth. Now, I'm trying to adjust my camera here, so bear with me here because this is kind of one of those, yeah, you know. Um, anyway, our sun is operating, it's going to be operating at a very low energy level, and then energy output will be reduced by 60% by 2030. Now, um, some of you might say is, oh, Snow Queen's going to be happy. She's going to be enjoying her cold and snow and ice and frost. And... <sighs> yes, but there's a catch with everything. Um, and that is in 15 years, the question is, is, are you ready to prepare for this? You have 15 years to get your, your house in order. And the first question that comes across my head is, are you preparing for such an event? In the last few months of this year, we have seen not just natural issues with disasters, volcanism, earthquakes, tsunamis, what have you, on increase. We've also seen the growing instability in our man-made systems, such as infrastructure, pipelines rotting away, bursting the flames, bridges failing, um, the the resources that we depend on to support ourselves failing. Even my own economy, in my own economic situation is since the last few, um, since March has been a difficult trial and tribulation for me to recover. Um, on a personal level, um, I'm kind of holding my own. I'm not saying I'm doing great, I'm not saying I'm doing bad, but what I'm saying is that things are just a mess. Um, I have seen and talked to many others in my community who are in the same economic streets as me, asking the tough questions, which is, why is this happening to us? What's the cause? What can we do about it? What is the solution? Now we all know about the situation in Greece and in, in a couple of years ago, Spain and, and uh, Ireland and China. Yeah, China's got an inflationary trend right now. They're kind of suffering. The world's great manufacturer is seeing its production uh, suffering declines, which means that the number of exports from China has declined because the amount of people able to buy the goods has declined. It's all interconnected, just like Tom Lovshu had said. It is all interconnected from everything. So the question is, is what can you do to prepare for it? On a personal level, let's be honest, I'm not really doing as good as I'd like. I'm not alone. We all are suffering from uh, hard times ahead of us. Every single one of us. Here I am sitting in my transitionary room, waiting to get back to my main apartment, which fortunately enough right now is in the process of being painted. Um, while the porch outside 
He's in the process of being renovated and rebuilt. Uh, between all that, I'm still sleeping on the floor. On a double over comforter and a pillow. And I'm, because I decided it was not practical or feasible to bring my bedroom down here. And it certainly would not have been. I wouldn't even try to bring my computer that does the main videos down here because um, it's too heavy, too delicate, and it's just not worth the risk of having it get damaged in transit. So we're using an old iPhone 3GS, which clearly could use a bit of a, um, a revitalization on it. It needs some renovation too. First of all, it needs a new battery. Could definitely benefit from that. Could definitely benefit from a new home button, which sometimes is dodgy as heck. It doesn't always work. And, well, you know, as the old saying says, from like we hear from uh, Kim's Robin Stanley, well, Robinson, should keep the guy nine. What you do with what you got. And this is what I got. So this is what we're using. Not because it's great. Not because it's fantastic. Not because it's powerful. Let's be honest. It's none of those things. It's just there. It's a tool that helps us to get these videos out to you. That's the main important thing. Is to get out the information that you can use. So if the temperature of the earth drops to the point where like in the middle of the little ice age, that birds freeze to death and you can get a frozen turkey just from waiting outside. Oh, well, maybe not a frozen turkey, but how about a frozen sparrow? Frozen robin? Owls? The temperatures got so cold in the middle ages that uh, in the last mini ice age that birds fell from the sky, froze to death. I suppose you'd say, hmm, that's nice. And all I have to do is just pluck it, clean it, put it in the oven, and have a dinner. Ah, but there's another problem, and it's not a new one. In fact, it was discussed um, back in the 1970s, and uh, the models are confirming this is to be the case, is the availability of fossil fuels is dropping because there's just not enough supply to meet demand. Fossil fuel is a finite resource and you only got so much. We use a lot of fuel. I mean a lot of fuel. Trust me. Um, it's even if you were to go back to renewable fuels such as wood or bamboo or other fuels, the problem would still be is that with the temperatures dropping, everybody's getting bought wood. Which means that, just like happened in Germany, you're going to start cutting, clear cutting forests because there just won't be enough supply to meet the heating demand of people who are trying to keep some warmth in their homes as the temperatures plummet. So, the problem is, is that we need to start rethinking our way of doing things because we have 15 years to get ready. And I don't care what someone tells you. There's a big difference between a normal winter and a mini ice age. Because I've mentioned this once before. Look at the mini ice age that happened in the year without a summer here in New England. No, at that time we did not have a mass transit, we did not have the transportation that like we have today, the highway system, whatever. Like, it was said to be called the year um, 1812 or froze to death. Think about what it meant, froze to death, because it was so cold at that time. People couldn't even keep warm. Not something to think about. I mean, you're talking about something that's going to affect the lives of millions of people. Now, of course, we might say, well, we're better now. we got infrastructures. We've got gas pipelines and oil pipelines and electrical grids and all this stuff. Hold on a minute, guys. That's a problem. A lot of those things are out of sight, out of mind.
Which means is that for most people, they don't think about checking every single pipeline in this country, for example. There's a lot of pipelines. We've already seen what happens when an oil pipeline ruptures, and natural gas pipelines rupture, and and all the fuel pipelines rupture, to the failure of the power grid. You think I forgot what 2003 did? Really? You think it couldn't happen again? Or somehow a substation in Ohio could all of a sudden cause the entire New York City to go into pitch black for weeks? Of course it can happen again. It can happen any time. We can't keep depending on a system that's going to fail us. we got to start thinking about what we need to do for ourselves. I'm encouraging every single one of you to think about this. Well, this book, 2012, which is over here, I'll tell you that, this one may be a bit out of date. The stuff that Robert Bost mentions is not out of date. You need to consider that, what you're going to experience. Now, he never mentioned the Mini Ice Age specifically, he did briefly mention it. Uh, so for that reason, we need to consider, um, here, here's just some things that we need to live without. I just have a land right on top of this page. Infrastructure banks won't be able to operate. No one's bank holidays in Greece right now. Nor will ATMs. They also use TPS, timestamp and transactions. However, it like won't work. President Trevor Camps initially. Uh, place of emergency services will struggle to communicate. We're talking about specifically with the GPS systems. Um, will struggle to communicate. Empty store shelves will not be refilled. Almost everywhere will be unable to work the regular job. Water. Some cities have gravity fed water available, but in most places we rely on electrical pumps to get water to our homes. Electricity is also needed at the water purification plant. Uh, apart from drinking water, consider that we used to wash, wash toilets and move sewage away from our homes. Well, electricity, many sewage plants will not operate. Heating and cooling with less of these could, be, could kill people during winter and summer months. Energy and fuel pipelines can fail. And the normal way to access stored fuel was an electric pump. While manual pumping might get gasoline out of a gas station, the authorities or thugs will likely be in control. Nuclear power plants. Um, I'm just going to wrap this up real quick here. Without electricity, there's only diesel generators to keep the plants cool and avoid meltdowns. It would not be surprising if the amount of diesel on hand is low and the ability to pay more or even ask for more could be a low in dark USA. Put all the above together and you invoke the butterfly effect. Or one example is the crime will increase due to looting to keep um, peace with looters would need to be arrested in jail but to operate jails with no electricity becomes problematic. No video surveillance difficulties in parading for food and water and so on and so forth, which means a not the police need to be on deputized, removing able bodied men and women from all these little tasks. The police chief might decide that looting is a hanging offense. And this you can see on page 93 of uh, Survive 2012. Now, I, I know this is a pretty simple primer, it's not really the most comprehensive book in the world. I've read through this. Um, but the infrastructure um, is in the United States is old, in Europe is old. And especially the power grid. Um, a scroll in the mass ejection, for example, during a mini ice age could really kill you. Um, may not physically I mean, the CME may not physically kill you, but the inability to get heat, the inability to get hot water, the inability to stay warm 
the inability to get gasoline for your generator, even if you had one, um, inability to cook a meal if you have an electric stove, even if you have natural gas, natural gas systems use SCADA, which is a, uh, a control system which maintains over pipelines. And a lot of systems run on TPS, which depends on electricity, which depends on satellites, which depends on all this stuff, and, well, guess what? <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, honey. It's just like the book said, this butterfly effect is gonna happen, where one thing leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, which leads to another, and the next thing you know, the whole system has gone bluey. Now, Jade Helm 15 may actually be our military preparing for a large variety of possible scenarios, including the collapse of the United States banking system. Now, I mentioned 2016 in the third, in the last three months of the year, that they may be cutting the S Social Security disability checks by 18 percent. I don't have to tell you what 18 percent cut would do to me. It would be suicidal for one thing. It would destroy my life. It would destroy my income. It would make it hard for me to pay my bills. Definitely might even lose my housing because I can't pay my rent in time. And you think you, if people on disability depend on governments, look what's going on over in Greece. Look what's going on over in Italy. Look what's going on over in Europe. Where austerity is ruling the land. And in the UK, it's the fixed income people and the pensioners. Are getting screwed. It's not the will to do. The will to do, they got their own money plans. Well, the other part of the Bilderberg plan and the Illuminati plan, and, well, that's not me. So, unfortunately, people like me are going to end up getting the shaft again. So, the, the point is, is that we need to prepare for the fact is that one day that the systems that we all depend on are not going to be there to help you something to think about. And we see what's happening now in the economic situation. It's not too long before it's over. You know. Oh guys, um, I'm going to let you go and uh, stuff and hopefully in a few weeks and I'm, I'll try to check it out in so a few days as we can. Um, maybe a week, maybe two weeks. If we're lucky. The apartment will be back in operational. The Bean Studio will be back operational. Um, it's a colossal mess. It's right now. It's it's pee buckets everywhere. Um, it's it's becoming a uh, a big production. It's not going to be um, no walk in the park. Never mind the fact that they're building the porch. The porch is the reason why people can't return to the home until it's done. So that is getting done. The concrete's being poured. The con um, foundations are being made for the new outbuilding. That's going to be done probably in a couple weeks. But the main problem for me is I probably won't be here a little longer than the other families in the building. And then they'll probably be returning first because their apartments are not being painted um, and cleaned up. and stuff like that, new floors being put down, but um, unfortunately I am, um, so I'll be here. Um, I welcome your comments, and for those of you in Albania, and those of you in Italy, and those of you in Greece, and the UK, wherever you may be, I want to hear from you. How are you feeling? How are you coping with your situations in your lives? How are you managing, given the news, with the economic situation, the social economic so I'm going to include social slash economic slash military because obviously you've got all three kind of working together in the governments of your countries and all the behaviors. How are you managing? How are you coping with the things in your life? I'd like to know. Okay? So don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below here. That's right. They've got a comment section. And um, also please do not forget to share with everybody, you know, your friends, your family. You know, your friends, friends, I mean your enemies. And there's something very important here that we need to share. And don't forget to like or dislike. And of course, if you haven't already done so, subscribe. That lets me know at least that you're interested in what I've got to say. And um, I'll talk to you soon. And of course, I hope that you will, you know, be ready for the inevitable event. Because the day is coming when things are just not going to be the same anymore. And uh, 
So plan ahead and be ready for it.